In this video, we will study the pathology of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Firstly, we will see its definition, then we will discuss its pathogenesis according to the types, and at last we will see its morphological features in details. So first of all, we need to learn that rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis is not just a glomerulopathy of absolutely different type. Rather, any of the cause of nephritic syndrome, if becomes so rapidly progressive that it causes rapid decline in renal function, will be categorized in the category of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. So technically, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis means nephritic syndrome plus rapid decline in renal function. Now let's study the pathogenesis of this disease. According to the pathogenesis, it can be divided into three main categories. First category is anti-glomerular basement membrane mediated disease. Now this is a specific and unique disorder in which our immune system develops autoantibodies against the antigens of glomerular basement membrane. The example of such diseases are good pastures disease or good pasture syndrome. And what happens in these diseases is that antibodies formed against glomerular basement membrane destroy the glomerular structure and the resultant glomerular injury results in nephritic syndrome. And this glomerular injury is so severe that it causes rapid decline in renal function. That's why we classify it as rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Now here I also want to mention the difference between good pastures disease and good pasture syndrome. The difference is that in good pastures disease, the antibodies that are developed attack only the glomerular basement membrane of kidneys. While in good pasture syndrome, these antibodies that are formed not only attack glomerular basement membrane of kidneys, but they also cause damage to lungs. So good pasture syndrome is actually a more extensive category that is not confined to kidneys, but can also involve the lungs. Now other than anti-glomerular basement membrane mediated disease, the second category is immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis. And we have studied in previous videos that several categories of glomerulonephritis are mediated by immune complex mechanisms. For example, such as in post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis or IgA nephropathy, immune complex deposits get deposited in the kidney and cause activation of complement proteins. And once the complementary system is activated, it causes recruitment of leukocytes and then these leukocytes cause glomerular endothelial damage that result in nephritic syndrome. But in cases if the damage to glomeruli is so extensive that it causes rapidly decline in renal function, then we classify it in the category of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Now the third category is posse immune glomerulonephritis. Posse immune means the absence of immune complexes or antibodies on immunohistochemical staining. So this is the category of disease in which there is no formation of anti-GBM antibodies or immune complexes. Rather, there is formation of antibodies against neutrophilic antigens that are called anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. These antibodies are developed in some cases of vasculitis such as in microscopic polyangitis or uh, vaginal granulomatosis but they can also be formed even without any systemic vasculitis. And what do these antibodies do? Well, these antibodies target the neutrophils and result in activation of neutrophils that cause severe damage to glomeruli resulting in nephritic syndrome and rapid decline in renal function. So the first of three categories of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis is anti-glomerular basement membrane mediated disease such as good pasture disease or good pasture syndrome in which antibodies attack glomerular basement membrane that cause rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. The secondary, second category is immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis such as post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis in which leukocytes activated by complement system cause glomerular damage resulting in rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. And the third category is posse immune in which the antibodies that are NCA or anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies cause neutrophilic activation which destroy the glomerular structure and result in rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Now let's come to the morphology of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. We will discuss this in three parts. First is light microscopy, then electron microscopy and at last immunofluorescence. Now in light microscopy the keywords to remember are presenteric, glomerulo and nephritis. Now this term crescenteric glomerulonephritis is another official name of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis and if you focus on this name then this will help you to remember the light microscopic fe features of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. So the first keyword is crescenteric and this implies that there will be formation of eosinophilic crescents in the Bowman's capsule of the kidney. But how these crescents are formed? These crescents are actually made up of fibrin material and proliferating epithelial cells. This fibrin material actually comes when the glomerular capillaries are damaged and the fibrinogen proteins leak from the glomerular capillaries into the Bowman's capsule. This fibrinogen is then converted into fibrin strands and appear as crescenteric structures. 
and along with the fibrin and epithelial cells of Bowman's capsule, there are some inflammatory cells that come for attacking the glomeruli, but then they get migrated also in the Bowman's capsule. This collection of fibrin material, epithelial cells and inflammatory cells in Bowman's capsule result in certain crescent-like bodies in Bowman's capsule that we call as crescentic structures. Now Robin's pathology calls such type of proliferation as extracapillary proliferation. Why extracapillary? Because these epithelial cells and inflammatory cells are outside the glomeruli in the Bowman space. So this is proliferation outside the capillary loops. That's why it is extracapillary. Now the second keyword is glomerular. This implies that there will be damage to glomeruli resulting in capillary wall necrosis and breaks in glomerular basement membrane caused by severe glomerular injury. The third keyword is nephritis and as itis stands for inflammation, so you will see neutrophils and monocytes. So overall the main features of rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis are crescents in Bowman's capsule that are made up of fibrin, proliferating epithelial cells and inflammatory cells, glomerular capillary wall necrosis and breaks in glomerular basement membrane, and infiltrating leukocytes that are neutrophils and monocytes. Now we studied that there are three types of rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis and out of these one type is immune complex mediated glomerular nephritis. Now specifically in immune complexes mediated glomerular nephritis there is one additional light microscopic feature that is endothelial and mesangial proliferation. And in the section of post streptococcal glomerular nephritis and IgA nephropathy we studied that hypercellularity or proliferation of endothelial and mesangial cells is a consistent feature. So if these conditions progress to rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis, then the features of endothelial and mesangial proliferation will be visible. But in other two categories of rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis that are anti-glomerular basement membrane mediated disease and posse-immune glomerular nephritis, these features of endothelial and mesangial proliferation is not usually seen. Now let's come to the immunofluorescent staining of different cases of rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis. And this particular point is very important from examination point of view. You know that we studied three types of rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis. First type is anti-glomerular basement membrane disease. In this disease, the immunofluorescent staining will reveal a linear pattern of staining instead of granular pattern. This means that the antibodies that are developing against the antigens of glomerular basement membrane will be deposited uniformly along the glomerular basement membrane and this uniform deposition results in linear pattern instead of granular pattern. Now please remember this point because it is frequently asked in MCQs. And amongst all diseases of glomeruli, good pasture disease or syndrome is the only condition where the deposition of antibodies is in linear form. Now secondly, in immune complex mediated glomerular nephritis, the deposition of antibodies is granular in appearance. These granular deposits are usually at the subendothelial location. So the point to remember is that in immune complex mediated glomerular nephritis, the deposition will always be granular, not linear. And thirdly, in posse immune glomerular nephritis, which is not mediated by immune complexes, you will see absence of immunofluorescent staining. Now let's revise this particular point once again. In anti-GBM disease, there will be linear pattern of immunofluorescent staining. In immune complexes mediated glomerular nephritis, there will be granular immunofluorescent staining. And in posse immune glomerular nephritis, there will be no immunofluorescent staining. Now lastly, on electron microscopy, the feature that is visible is ruptures in glomerular basement membrane. You know that rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis implies that there will be severe injury to glomeruli. So this severe injury in the glomerular basement membrane appears at broken or ruptured glomerular basement membrane on electron microscope. Moreover, in immune complex mediated glomerular nephritis, you will also be able to see immune complex deposition. So this concludes our discussion on rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis.